something uh, that Larry Hohal probably understands a little bit of. And he's with us in the studio today. He's back. He was uh, with us previously to talk about his book, Luzerne County Railroad. And uh, Larry, you're, you're home, right? Yes, I am. You've come home from FLA to be with us. So I appreciate it so much that you had uh, given us the opportunity to have you on the show today. Oh, thank you for uh, for having me here. This is a, a wonderful opportunity for me, and it's a wonderful platform. A lot of people listen to your show that uh, are of like mindsets. And what, uh, what is that mindset, Lair? Oh, well, uh, we've, we've pretty much had enough of the corruption. I have. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder if people are are burned out on the subject of corruption here, though, because there becomes a point, and I'm sure as a business person, when you were going through your own struggles here, you thought, why Why am I continuously fighting? Why am I fighting this system? Why am I fighting when I know I can't win? I ask that very question about every other day, um, and it's been going on for 20 years, 25 years now. Um, you, know, you get fatigued, uh, and, and you really feel like... Um, um, as an individual, there's there's just nothing you can do about it, and and that's a pretty accurate uh, f- feeling because it really, as an individual, there's very little you can do about it. And it, I, I think that you become um, a stranger in a strange land in a way because w- in your circumstance, which you can explain as we do the show, but in your circumstance, you felt so right that you were right, and the system kept telling you at times that you were wrong. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And that's that's maddening, isn't it? <laughs> it most certainly is. Uh, I'm, one of the things I mention in my book is, uh, thank goodness, the uh, the two local newspapers, the Times Leader and the Citizen's Voice, both picked up on my story when it was unfolding at the courthouse. And it gave me great comfort to know that I wasn't the only one seeing what I was seeing. And, and it really helped a lot of my friends understand that Larry hadn't gone off the, the rails of the crazy train. Did, did people say that to you, Larry? Did people say, you're wrong. Why do you, you keep seeing these things in black and white? You're seeing these decisions handed down by the courts, and you, you continue to fight. Oh, yeah. Why are you doing this? Yes, I've had uh, very close friends of mine uh, say exactly that, uh, and, and them not knowing the inner workings of what was really happening and i would have to spend a lot of time trying to educate them and they go and the first thing they do is their eyes roll back in their head and they go well that can't happen (laughs) that doesn't happen that way judges can't do that and i'm saying i'm telling you that's what's happening and i can prove it to you and it's just um you spend a lot of time doing that uh with with non-believers well now that uh you know one judge is in jail and two are on their way. Uh, it's not so hard to find believers anymore. Yeah, and I hate to jump ahead in the in the story, but what when you see uh, the the unfolding of this in Luzerne County, what what do you think in your heart of hearts? Without uh, I, I know we're jumping ahead a little bit, but mm-hmm. what do you think? They're barely scraping the surface, barely. It's 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 the smallest possible step that they could they could take. And they have taken it, fortunately, up to this point they haven't. So you're telling me that over 30 arrests is barely scraping the surface. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people will agree with me on that, that that have been raised here and and they know how the system works. My biggest fear right now is that there is an effort by the U.S. Attorney's Office to start winding things down. And they're going to go away and we're going to have business as usual. Well, that's a disheartening thought, and you pointed to an article in the newspaper this morning that you also wanted to discuss. Before we get to the the genesis of of your book, Mm -hmm. which we are going to talk about, but there was an article on page three today that you (laughs) say you take exception with. Why do you take exception with what's written there? Well, um, it's on page three of the Citizen's Voice, and it says, Court Reforms Recommended. And the very first thing um, I came across when I started reading the article was who they interviewed for the article. Uh, I spent time, a lot of time, with this group. It's um, uh, it's a nonprofit Pennsylvania group, and it's called Pennsylvanians for Modern Courts. And when I was uh, working, uh, researching more information on my book and writing my book, I contacted these people and um, spent a lot of time on the phone with them. And I, I was very encouraged by who I spoke with. I spoke with uh, very knowledgeable attorneys that had a, a staff of people that had really nice offices and and they returned my calls when they weren't available and and it was like 
they took all kinds of notes. They researched things. I'm like, these people are on top of it. I mean, this is wonderful. And uh, I got to the point where I wanted to make a donation to them. I mean, it, it, I recommended everybody out there call these people up and say, I want to make a donation to you. Because they don't take donations. I'm like, what? Are you people are all volunteers? That's even more incredible. No, we're all very highly paid, thank you. Well, where do you get your money from if you don't take donations? Well, I couldn't get an answer. Well, they are funded by the government. 100% of every dollar they spend comes from the government. So this organization is out there kind of running... Well, you know, trying to find out who the troublemakers are, what the organizations, the grassroots organizations are that are out there and what their plans are to upset the apple cart. You know, if these this particular organization, if they if they upset the apple cart, their funding will be cut. If they help push the apple cart, wonderful things will happen. So they're like the fox investigating the hen. Yes. Oh, that's terrible to find out. It, it really is. I was so disheartened by it. Did uh, you mention it to them at all? Oh, yeah. And what did they say? <laughs> oh, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I did. And, and uh, I've, obviously, I don't communicate with them anymore. I, I, was, I was appalled, to say the least. Now, let's take a, a, a journey back in time to how you became involved in the court system in Luzerne County. The road to hell, of course, is, is paved with good intentions. And here's Larry Hohall. All he wants to do is start a business in Luzerne County, which seems noble. Well, yeah, <laughs> you would think. Uh, actually, my roots go back much further. I was a police officer uh, in Luzerne County, uh, in Luzerne Borough, for a few years. So I kind of got my feet wet uh, with exposing, being exposed to the judicial system. And even at that point, I, I became very tainted. Uh, I had, to, uh, at the time, a district attorney who later became a judge fix uh, a very uh, important DUI, serious injury case, um, uh, because the, the father of the, of the gentleman that I had arrested was a, a personal friend and a, and a big donator. Um, to his his ambitions of becoming a uh, continuing to be the DA and so forth and I and I, I had over a hundred uh, moving traffic violations fixed by the local magistrate and I was involved in an investigation with the um, um, state attorney general's office into local corruption and um, met with him many 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 times and uh, uh, their advice to me was to buy a larger caliber off-duty weapon, and uh, they then disappeared. I never heard from them afterwards. Uh, and so the people you, that they so were you, investigating became very, very good supporters of the uh, uh, the Pennsylvania district attorney. So you kicked up the dust, and you thought you'd get you, somebody to watch your back, and they just told you buy a bigger gun. Yeah. Yeah, I laughed at them. I, you know, we were sitting at a diner over in Wilkesbury, and I have two agents with me, and we're sitting there eating lunch, and you know, having our BLTs, and and uh, you know, I'm figuring, okay, well, there's going to be some indictments handed down now because they have all the information. They verified everything that I told them, and uh, he he told me, yeah, yeah, you know, Larry, you really need to buy a bigger. What he asked me, what kind of gun I carried. And I told him, he says, you need to buy a bigger caliber handgun, that, you know, for, for your off-duty weapon. And I, I laughed. I, yeah, okay. He said, no, I'm, he said, I'm dead serious. He said, I'm not kidding. And that was that, huh? And that was it. I never saw him again. How about that? And yeah. then uh, nobody did anything after you kicked up the dust storm, which is always discouraging, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> when you're out there and you... <laughs> you you want to feel naked in public, you know, go do something like that. I mean, you know, like, you're out there. And one of the other discouraging things at that point in time was um, that a lot of the police officers that I had become very close with, they, they had, had encouraged me to go and do this, just turned into clams. They just didn't want, and, and they were smart. I mean, they, they wanted to keep their jobs. They had families. They had kids. Um, when I say they were smart, they were smart in the short term, and you see where it's gotten us. Yeah. I was watching the Kane Mutiny the other night, and this kind of reminds me of that, where, where they there was the encouragement to kick up the dust, and then there was the, yeah. well, I, I never told you <laughs> yeah. to kick that dust pile. That's I don't exactly. know where you got that idea from. We're going to take the break on WILK, and then we'll get into the heart of the book. Larry Hoha will sign Luzerne County Railroad on Sunday, June 19th at 2 p.m. 
a.m. at the Barnes & Noble in the Arena Hub. That's so that's right. where you're going to be on Father's Day, which will be a great opportunity for people to come out and